Veja só o que diz Look at what the Holy Scriptures say. Let us understand Romans chapter 8, verse 6. The Apostle Paul, speaking to the newly converts, speaking to those who were in Rome and in that time, living under every sort of sin, living carnally, living after the desires, the lusts of the flesh. These were people who lived in the flesh. But many had converted to the Lord Jesus. But among these converts, there were also those who were not converted. You know how it is. Half cement, half brick. Those who claim to follow the Lord Jesus from their mouth. Verbally only, but not on the inside, in the inside. So the Apostle Paul, he speaks exactly about the situation. He speaks exactly to these people, these kinds of people who unfortunately do not assume their faith in the Lord Jesus. Look at this. For to be carnally minded is death. To be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. I'll read once again. For to be carnally minded is death. Is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal minded, the carnal mind is enmity with against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, which means it does not go with the discipline of God, nor indeed can be. I was reading the comments on my blog, and people were saying, Bishop. I really want the Holy Spirit. It's what I mostly desire. But I've been a while in the church. I'm a faithful tither. I am a giver. But I still have not received the Holy Spirit. Why have I not yet received the Holy Spirit? Why hasn't she received if, she, if apparently, apparently she is doing what is correct? She has not yet received the Holy Spirit because certainly the Spirit of God has seen something or is seeing something in her which impedes her or him for, to come upon his life or their lives. For example, a person came in one of these campaigns of Israel. She came with a packet of money. And she was placing that sacrifice on the altar. So the bishop, he knew that person had a dream. And she was depositing everything she had on the altar. But he also knew, the bishop also knew, that she was a person who had a lover. And her greatest desire was to have a son, a child. So what happened? This bishop called her aside and told her, Look, woman, this, it's not worth it doing this for you to put your entire offering of sacrifice on the altar. But to continue living a life with your lover, which means you're a lover of a man who is married. Do you think it is right? Do you think it's just that you have a child from a married man? Do you think it's correct? Do you think it's okay with 
So if you don't find this right, imagine God. Imagine God. You're looking at the child, but you're not looking at the consequences. The consequences of this child having given birth, being born rather from an unjust act, immediately that woman took back that offering and said to Bishop, I understood it now, what God wants from me. I got it. It's not by strength or force I, that I will reach what I want, which is to have a child. And so she took back the offering she had placed on the altar and she went home. She got home, called her lover, told him, come here, get all your stuff and disappear from my life because I don't want this anymore. She called his wife and said, look, I want to tell you that truly I have been a lover to your husband, but from now on you can trust me. I don't want your husband anymore. I don't want him anymore. Forgive me all this time which I caused difficulties, sadness, problems to you. But from here onwards, you will no longer hear about him having me as his lover. So there was an attitude. There was an attitude of intelligent faith. Exactly as it's written in the Holy Scriptures. Let's read the Holy Scriptures. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life, life and peace. How could she have life and peace living in the inclination of the flesh, of her will, of her desires? How could she satisfy God and her flesh at the same time? So, he concludes by saying, because the carnal mind is enmity with God. is enmity against God. So, when the person is inclined to the carnal, to the flesh, it's adultery, fornication, theft, lies, deceits, everything which is carnal, everything that has an inclination to what is wrong, what is unjust, it's enmity against God. It's enmity against God. Perhaps you watch me here now and you say, Bishop, Truly, I have sought and desired the Holy Spirit, but indeed I've lived an incorrect life. I've lived an irregular life. I go to church, I am a giver, a tither, etc. But I live an irregular life with someone else. So how can she mix? How can she conciliate the tendencies of the flesh with that of the spirit? It's not possible. It's written here that if a person lives in fornication, lies, theft, piracy, when she lives doing what is wrong, how can she receive the Holy Spirit? How can a person who comes to church at night, but during the day, she's busy with drugs, she's selling, exchanging, trading drugs, or stealing for drugs, using drugs, abusing drugs, if she wants to receive the Holy Spirit, she has to turn her backs to those drugs. She has to say, I will not accept this anymore. I will no longer be enslaved by this desire. God will have to do something in my life because I'm seeking Him. When a person has this 
decision, this determination, then the Holy Spirit comes and leads her to reach life and, re and reach peace. And I believe, let us continue reading. I believe the Apostle Paul was speaking to people. You, verse 9, but you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you. Which means those who are not in flesh are in spirit. Those who are in spirit are not in flesh. And now if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is not his. And if it's not his, then the person has no life. They'll obviously not have peace. It's clear. It's obvious. It's obvious. Do you want life? Do you want peace? Do you want a good life? Do you want to live with your life, your head held up high, not running up and down, running away here and there because of a wrong life, because you've been cheating, because of lies, of steal, stealing. So, my dear friends, you have to seek the Holy Spirit. But in first place, you need to leave your sin. Because in sin, a person cannot receive the Holy Spirit. Is that not true? How can one receive the Holy Spirit living in fornication and adultery? In lies. So he comes upon a person who lets go of sin, who does her best, she fights, but God gives, she knows God gives grace, strength for her to let go of that sin to receive the Holy Spirit. Did you get this, my dear friend? God wants to change your life. He wants to pour the Holy Spirit upon all people, upon everyone. But He cannot be pouring anyhow because it's not a market. The Holy Spirit is not a market. Those who want, they need to desire. They need to be thirsty. She must be thirsty. Because if she's not thirsty, nothing will happen. Sometimes a person is even in the church, but she's not thirsty. She has no thirst for what is just, for what is correct. She enjoys her sin and she tries to conciliate, to reconcile her, her, her sin with her Christian life, with her life in the church. It's not possible. You have to decide. You have to decide. What do you want? Do you want life and peace? Then you need to incline to the Holy Spirit. If you don't want life and peace, then continue living the way you've been living until, I don't know when. But one thing is certain. Those who receive the Holy Spirit, they have the essence of God within themselves. They are happy. They are rich, truly rich. And they live a life that is abundant, which is what the Lord Jesus promised. Praise be to God. You see, my dear friends, that the Holy Spirit is the only option of life for us. You may have everything in this world. You may have money. You may have family. You may have success professional success but you don't if you don't have the holy spirit you're poor 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 miserable because life was created by him the holy spirit is the spirit of life and without him there is no life peace was created by him and without him without the spirit of peace you're obviously not going to have peace so it's a matter of intelligence. Use your wisdom. Without the Holy Spirit, there's no chance for you. You may graduate, you may get a lot of money, you may have success, but if you don't have the Holy Spirit, your life will be blunt. Your life will be of sadness. Sadness and pain.